Hi angels, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to finally be back in front of the camera filming something for you guys. My channel has been growing even in my absence, so I wanna first just take a moment to thank you guys. Thank you for my subscribers for being loyal. Thank you for the newbies for joining the team. I hope the content that I create is of enjoyment for you guys, and I hope you enjoy this video. Today I am talking six remedies to help cure, temporarily cure, I should say, dry and itchy scalp because this summer my scalp is not my friend and I've been trying some remedies at home to see if they work and some of them actually do. So I wanna share those with the world. Hopefully they help anyone else who's on the same struggle bus as me and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Don't forget to subscribe before you go and let's get into it. Okay, my first remedy is going to seem super obvious, but I'm gonna say it because sometimes it just has to be said. Wash your scalp thoroughly and regularly. Build up the climate change, sweat, dirt, all these things start to compile in our scalp and fill our pores, and that ends up leading to dryness, itchiness, peeling and dandruff. Um, once we scratch, we end up scratching our scalp raw. In order to avoid all those things, my first remedy is that we be intentional about washing our scalp regularly. It doesn't have to be every day. Everyone's on their own routine. I personally wash my hair maybe once a week. Um, when I have protective styles, sometimes I do go longer. Like right now, I'm pretty overdue if I do say so myself. Um, but definitely be intentional about washing your scalp. I've seen people go in and when they wash their hair, they literally just focus on like the strands of their hair and completely neglect their scalp. And that's really the most important part. Just like when we bathe, we don't bathe our bodies to clean the hairs on our bodies. We bathe our bodies to clean our skin. Same concept for your scalp. When you go in with shampoo, scrub your actual scalp, all that shampoo is gonna trickle down and naturally clean the strands of your hair. So if you're not focusing on your scalp, you could literally get out of washing your hair without ever having touched your scalp like you should have. In the same token, make certain you're doing that same cleansing routine for your hair care products, your combs, your brushes. When you're using those products on dirty hair, naturally that buildup is now within your utensils. I'm gonna say utensils for lack of a better word, but y'all know what I mean. If you do not wash those, but you wash your scalp and hair, and then you use those same brushes and combs, you're now just replacing all of the filth you washed away, and you're putting it back in your hair. So wash your hair, or your scalp, excuse me, your hair, of course, and the combs, brushes, and whatever other utensils you use for your hair. Okay, my next remedy that I'm going to share with you all is going to be around your shampoos and conditioners. I've actually learned that in not being super hyper-focused and careful around the shampoos and conditioners that I've used, I've grown into itchy and dry scalp. I actually didn't used to have it, and after doing some research, I've learned that in addition to other things, your shampoos and your conditioners can be contributing factors to why your scalp is just being a huge pest in your life. Two ingredients I've learned are important to avoid in your shampoos and your conditioners are one, sulfur, especially for those who are natural heads like myself. Sulfur is counterproductive to your hair growth and then silicone actually is really bad for your hair as well and it could cause itching and dry scalp dandruff etc so avoid those two things when picking out your shampoos and your conditioners another recommendation I have is that you use shampoos that are actually targeted at those issues one that uh, my fiance and I have recently learned that does some super magic is head and shoulders and I know growing up head and shoulders was always focused on like dandruff more specifically and we don't necessarily have those problems it's just more so like our scalp sometimes irritate us and they actually have a head and shoulders brand that's focused on um, itchy and dry scalp so it has ingredients like eucalyptus and tea tree oil and all those things that really help remedy those issues so I definitely recommend Head & Shoulders as a like drugstore brand if you're looking for something a little bit more inexpensive they have a whole bunch of other brands that you could dig into they have medicated more natural so do some research to figure out you know where you want to start 
obviously try a bunch of them out because you're never really going to know what works for you until you give it a try. A product that I recently came across and I got super excited about because I use this brand for all my other natural hair care products is Cantu Shea Butter's new dry shampoo and this one actually is a dry co-wash which is even better because if I can avoid shampoo I'd actually prefer it if I could just use only conditioner and this one has apple cider vinegar and tea tree oil so it's specifically focused on um, those who have like drier itchier scalp and in this little circle bubble here um, it literally says no sulfates, no silicones. So those are two products that I had recommended you avoid in your shampoos. And if you are going to try this product out, how you use a dry shampoo is basically you just like spray your scalp like this. And then you just let it dry. And it smells really good. It feels like super refreshing. And it basically like cleans your scalp without having to wet it. Now, I don't use dry shampoo when I'm just rocking my normal hair. I prefer to actually let like water run through my scalp, but, <coughs> excuse me, Lord. <coughs> Choking. Oh my God. <coughs> Baba, <coughs> I need water. <coughs> okay, that was a terrible idea. I do not recommend using dry shampoo and trying to talk at the same time. I didn't realize how bad those fumes were going to be. It's kind of like hairspray, like you, I just damn near choked. <clears throat> anyway, I was saying, I don't normally use dry shampoos. If I can run water on my scalp, I will. But since I have a protective style in, I don't really like to run water if I can avoid it on my scalp because then my little natural hair start to like ping pong out of my braids and then they just end up looking more worn more quickly and I don't really like that. So I'm so happy that I found a dry shampoo, again, that's Cantu Shea Butters Apple Cider Vinegar Dry Co-Wash. It's kind of sad that this was actually on clearance in Target as if people just weren't really digging it, but I'm going to try it out and I'll let you guys know below if it works well for me. The next remedy that I want to share with you guys is going to be centered around scalp rinses. Now, about a year ago, I started doing some research on home remedies for like dry and itchy scalp because I wanted to figure out if there were like household products that I could use to help alleviate some of the irritation and there actually are quite a few so I want to share those with you guys and you all you can actually use these as rinses you can use them as rinses by themselves how I prefer to do it is I will usually do like a rinse before I shampoo um, but whichever works better for you. So just to walk you down the list of some of the things I've actually tried, I'm sure there's a million more other things out there that I haven't gotten my hands on yet. If you guys know any that I maybe don't mention, please list them below and share. I'd love to give them a try. But to walk y'all through some of the ones that we use here in our household, the first and most commonly used rinse that we've done is going to be apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is anti-inflammatory. Um, so it helps kill like yeasts and things like that, which you could use it on other parts of your body, but we found work well for buildup in your scalp. And how you'll use apple cider vinegar is you'll basically dilute it. I usually dilute it one part water or one part vinegar, excuse me, to two parts water. And then I'll pour it all over the scalp and kind of like scrub to clean, cleanse and lift everything that's got to go off the scalp. And then after that, I will follow up with shampoo and conditioner as normal. Another rinse you could try, I've actually only tried this once and I tried it on my fiance, is we use Listerine. Now Listerine is supposed to kill bacteria, obviously, because we use it for our mouthwash. Um, and it actually does the same thing for your scalp. They actually do not recommend you dilute the Listerine. You use it just as you would. You pour it, on, or not pour it, you use it straight and undiluted on your scalp, but you don't pour it, excuse me. You actually either spray it, so put it in a spray bottle and spray it on your scalp, or you'll dab it with a cotton ball. So that was actually the mistake we made, because if I remember correctly, I just poured it on his scalp, and I probably shouldn't have done that. So if you're going to try Listerine, either spray or dab it. Another remedy you could use um, for a scalp rinse is going to be 
<clears throat> baking soda. So baking soda, you could actually use it like an exfoliant, kind of how we would do a face scrub. You would do that same thing in your scalp. It will basically pick up all of the things that don't belong out of your scalp. So you'll do baking soda and a little bit of water until it makes kind of like a paste, but you want it to still be a little bit gritty and then you'll exfoliate your scalp with it. <clears throat> The fourth remedy that I would like to share with you all is that you use oil, oil, oil on your scalp. Oil is so important. I know oftentimes when our hair is oily, it's really, really, really annoying and we feel like it's unattractive and it looks dirty, etc. But your scalp will thank you for it if you oil it and oil it regularly. And when you do oil it, like give yourself a massage and just kind of like work it in there because that is what's going to help you avoid dryness. It's going to help you avoid peeling and dandruff. And avoiding those three things means that you avoid itchiness and that's the goal here. So definitely, definitely find an oil that you love that works well. Use it in moderation so that your hair isn't all built up with oil, of course, but definitely regularly oil your scalp a few oils you could use are like eucalyptus is really good. Tea tree oil is one that we personally take in a liking to in our home. Coconut oil, avocado oil, jojoba, jojoba oil. I don't remember how to say that, but that's a really good oil for your scalp. Um, olive oil and peppermint oil, just to name a few. Whichever of those you enjoy the smell of the most, you feel most comfortable with. Just get one and make it your best friend because oiling your scalp is really important. If you have a friend or a, or, a, or a significant other or a parent or anything like that that is willing and able and loves you enough to oil your scalp, solicit their assistance. It'll make the job much easier and it'll actually feel 10 times better when someone else does it. I don't know why oiling your scalp for yourself doesn't feel as good as having someone else do it. Whichever of the two you choose, just make sure it gets done. Because All right, guys, we're almost there. I'm almost done and about to hop off my soapbox. But my fifth recommendation and remedy for you guys is to let your scalp breathe. So hats, scarves, bonnets, all of those things prevent oxygen from getting to your scalp. Imagine if your body didn't have oxygen. Your body wouldn't function. It would start to break down. It would start to do things you don't want it to do. It's the same exact thing for your scalp. Those things are okay in moderation, obviously, but even things like ponytails restrict your scalp from being able to breathe, which then doesn't allow it to generate its own moisture, which then, of course, leads to dryness, which leads to et cetera, et cetera. We've already talked about this. So definitely, definitely allow your scalp to breathe regularly. Anything you can do to allow oxygen here and there to your scalp is really important. So that would be my fifth remedy for you. We're finally there. I'm finally done. My sixth and last remedy for you guys is to, drum roll please, consult a physician because I am not a doctor. And if these remedies do not help you, I definitely recommend seeing a professional. It could be something deeper. It could be something that you are not able to diagnose yourself. It could be more than what you think it is. And I never, ever, ever want any of you guys to take my advice as like Bible because it's not. These are just things that work well for me. So my sixth remedy, for lack of a better word, is that if none of these things that you're trying are working, you definitely loop in someone who has the professional wit behind it, the studies to back them to help guide you towards a better solution. So those are my remedies for dry and itchy scalp. These have worked for us, at least for temporary relief. I by no means have found a permanent solution. If I did, trust me, I would tell you. But doing these things regularly and consistently will allow you to see um, comfort more frequently and to avoid all the um, itchy dryness that we all despise so these are my remedies and recommendations for you guys i hope you found them helpful thank you so much for stopping back by my channel please don't forget to hit subscribe before you go comment any questions you might have please give this a thumbs up if it was helpful and i will see y'all in my next video bye guys i just wanted to take a brief moment to thank 
the man for letting me use his scalp <laughs> as my mannequin for this video. Thanks, please. Come on. <laughs> Ooh, look at my eyes. Am I tired or 